Hi, Chris and Tirsa Lesueur with the Preferred Experience Podcast. This is episode 34. We have Tirsa here today for our nutrition week. And the topic today is viewing food as energy, not the enemy. So it's hard sometimes to come up with topics each week when you're doing a podcast. And what we like to do a lot of times is is look and listen to our members of our gym and see what they're going through and I think that was your experience today yes so going into today I wasn't quite sure what I was going to talk about um so I thought you know what better way to figure it out than to ask those that are working with me to reach a specific goal so today I I wish I would have thought of this earlier to have this person on the podcast with me today but um we'll have to do it next time so Some of you may know um, Sonia Dodge. She's a new member at our gym. However, she was a longtime member a long time ago before, was it when you were? Yeah, it was like back in 2012, right in that area, maybe 2011 even. Yeah. So Sonia, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. So she she just rejoined at CrossFit Preferred and she's one of my nutrition clients. She's three weeks into my 12-week program. And so as she was leaving the gym today, I decided to just ask her a question. I asked her, what is the one, what are, what are the things that you've learned so far in my program that have helped you? And um, it was really, it, it spurred this conversation that we had for probably 20 minutes, um, just about the things that she's learned and the, and the change in her mindset. Um, so she, like I said, she's three weeks into our program. Sonia has a background of endurance sport. So she's done, I'm not, oh, I should have asked her. I'm not sure, quite sure how many, but she's done several full length Ironmans. Um, she is actually training for another Ironman right now and has decided that pairing um, nutrition and the, the work that we do in the gym will help her to accomplish this goal of finishing this Ironman. And so not only is she coming into the gym three to four days a week, she's also going on 100-mile bike rides on the weekend. She rides her bike trainer at her house. She's awesome. Her and her husband both have done quite a bit of long-distance training, long-distance racing. So it's been cool to kind of hear her side of things since she is fueling for a four- or five-hour workout workout basically it's been a little bit different than somebody who's just working out you know four to five days a week Mm -hmm. her husband just did lodija over the weekend too and that's a bike race that goes uh, from logan utah to jackson hole wyoming 203 miles and he crushed it it was his i think his sixth year doing it in a row so he's he's who i did still fit with years ago and um so i love i love both of them they're they're awesome So when I asked her the question, what have you learned since starting my program? The first thing she said is that you have to eat food to lose weight. And I'm so glad she said that because that is a very common misconception when people start my program. Um, I tell them what food they eat. I tell them what their macros are and how many calories to eat. And they have a hard time hitting it. They have, they feel like they're eating all the time, that they can't get all the food in their stuff that kind of thing so and I've talked about this in the past but basically what's happened is over time and I, I tend to see this a little bit more in women than men but over time um, women or people in general will try elimination diets or they'll try drastically cutting their calories And so what happens is your metabolism starts to slow down and you're not as hungry as often. And so then when somebody comes in like me and tells them they need to be eating a certain number of calories every day and they have a hard time getting it in, it's because they really aren't hungry. Their metabolism has slowed down. They don't feel like eating because they're so used to going five, six hours without eating. And so they have learned how to just, their bodies learn how to Um, use the calories that they are eating more efficiently instead of burning the calories that they're eating more efficiently. So we want, instead of using them more efficiently, we want to burn them more efficiently. We don't want to save those calories. Um, So like I said, she is training for an endurance um, long distance race. 
And so she said that for the first time in years, she feels good going into her workouts. She feels strong. She feels like she has the fuel and the energy that she needs going into the workouts. And that's, that's awesome. Like that's something that takes, I mean, she's only been with me for three weeks and already she's starting to see the benefits of fueling for, for the work that you want to do. She's able to do the things she loves and she's still losing inches, losing um, pounds. And instead of it being drastic, meaning it's most likely water weight, she knows that when she's down three pounds, it's going to be three pounds of fat, not three pounds of water weight. Um, and that's what happens when you are drastically doing drastic diets is you're not necessarily losing fat. I mean, you could be losing some fat, but it's not all fat. So for you to say, well, I lost 10 pounds in 14 days, the scale is just a number, guys. There, it, it's not telling you what you lost. It's not saying, okay, you lost seven pounds of fat and two pounds of muscle and one pound of water weight. Like that's why we don't want to drastically cut calories like that. Um, there's so many other reasons, but that's one of the main reasons. Um, so these extreme measures of losing weight, they, they're for the birds. We got to get rid of those guys. The extreme measures, they might work. They might kickstart your weight loss program, but settling into a more sustainable way of losing weight, meaning you're fueling your body for your, for your workouts and for your daily activities and just slightly cutting calories so that you still have energy but are seeing results. That's the way to go. That's the longevity of it. And that's what I try and teach my clients as well as anybody that will listen to me, <laughs> really. <laughs> um, anybody that walks through our door. Um, the other thing she said is, and this is something that I can truly attest to, is she feels like she's learning the things that she needs to know that she won't ever have to try another diet. So she had an experience just yesterday. Her neighbor made tamales and her neighbor texted her and said, hey, I just made tamales. Would you like some? And so she's still really new at this. And so I asked her, I said, okay, what was your response? And she's like, so her neighbor said, would you like some tamales or are you on a diet? So her neighbor and friends have all kind of learned that Sonia's always trying a diet. And that happened, that that actually happened to us one time. It was years ago. And I don't People know. People still say it to us. <laughs> I don't have anyone ask me that anymore. Maybe not diet, but they'll ask, they'll shame us if we're eating good, if we're trying to eat good. Mm, I don't know about that, but <laughs> my this is my point. My point is years ago, we went to dinner at a friend's house and they asked us if we were on if we were on a, any kind of diet. And it was embarrassing to me. It was embarrassing that my friends and felt like we were always dieting. I didn't want to be that person and this was before I knew about macros. And so when Sonia was asked, are you, you know, are you on a diet? It brought awareness to, yeah, she's always trying diets. And at, at this point, she finally realized, you know, that she doesn't have, she's not on a diet. She doesn't have to try any other diets. I'm to a point where I don't feel like I'm ever on a diet. Yes, I make good choices and I follow and try and do my best to kind of follow a, a healthy lifestyle, but I'm not dieting necessarily. Um, so I asked her what her response was to this. And like I said, that she's still kind of new at it. So she was like, she said, she said that she didn't want the tamales. So for me, this is what I would have done. If I had already planned my food out, if I have a very specific goal like Sonia does and I'm tracking my macros and, I'm and I have a very specific time frame goal, um, I may not have, I may, I would have 100% graciously taken the tamales. I would have enjoyed them. <laughs> and I may not have ate them that day because I already had my meal, my plan for the day, but I would have for sure figured out how to fit it in the next day. And that's what this is all about. This is. It's about eating the foods that you like. Sorry, we're outside, so it's kind of loud out here. It's extra loud today. <laughs> yeah. Whenever you film a podcast, it's going to be loud. That's what I've learned. Last week, we had the garbage truck. Okay, one second. All right. Um, so, so tracking macros isn't about eliminating. It's about eating the foods that you like in, in moderation so that you don't feel like you're dieting. So when I first started tracking macros, and I feel like I've said this before, but um, I, I have a very big sweet tooth. I love sweets. Just that's who I am. Um, 
So when I first started tracking macros and learning macros, I felt like I needed to have a treat every night in order to not feel like I was dieting. And so that's what I did. I planned, I planned it in advance. I would put my dessert in first. I would figure out a way to have something. It wasn't like a huge something, but it was usually ice cream. Um, the dryer slow churn ice cream because it was low in fat. Um, and I would have that every single night. Um, and that helped me feel like I wasn't dieting. It also helped teach me not to binge on the weekends because I was having treats every night. So why did I need to just have all this food on the weekend? Um, and when I first started tracking macros, I, I had a, um, cheat meal. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. We would have one cheat meal. When I finally hired a coach, she got rid of that cheat meal and I was like, ugh. <laughs> how am I going to do this? How am I going to enjoy the foods I like without having a cheat meal? But what it taught me is it taught me that um, it, I was I had a negative uh, relationship with food because like all the whole week when I was eating on my macro plan, I felt like that was like being too strict. I was being very, very strict. And then I got to reward myself by having this cheat meal. So once I took away that cheat meal and I just started following like a healthy, more moderate um, routine, it took away that negative uh, view on food for me. I no longer look at food as the enemy. I look at it as a way to fuel my body and to get the energy that I need. So I, I stopped thinking, okay, this is good food. This is bad food. It's just food. So if there's times where I want a treat and it, and, and it doesn't fall in my macros, I've learned to be able to have some of that treat, not all of it, or two two cupcakes or whatever it is. Um, so that brings me to my next step. Um, what do you do when you have special events? So Sonia's birthday is next week, so we had a chance to talk about what to do at this point. Um, her birthday is next week. In our family, birthdays are kind of a big deal. We make it a huge deal. We go out as a family. Um, sometimes we'll go on little trips together. My birthday was uh, a little over a month ago. We went to California. Um, so how do you how do you approach that? And the number one thing when you have an event that you don't have control over the food, or maybe you do have control, but yet you want to indulge a little bit, my biggest piece of advice is to have a plan. Go into that day having a plan. If your plan is I'm going to enjoy the day and not worry about what I eat and eat exactly what I want to eat, that's fine. One day of doing that isn't going to throw you off track. You guys are on a journey here. You're on a road that one day isn't going to completely sidewind you. Um, our losing weight or getting in shape or whatever is not a linear. It's not linear. You're going to have ups and downs. It's going to go, you know, you're going to have times where things are going great and things that are, times that they're not. Um, but overall, you're making steps in the right direction. So number one, have a plan. Um, that plan might be, so for Sonia, she's like, all I want is Mexican food and cake. I'm like, perfect. Do you care about breakfast? Like some people really like to eat out breakfast, lunch, and dinner on your birthday. She's like, no, I don't care. I'm like, okay, eat a high protein breakfast, low carb, low fat, eat high protein snacks throughout the day and enjoy your dinner, enjoy your evening, do what you want. Don't feel guilt about it. What happens if she goes into that day with a plan like that and it doesn't go to plan? That's okay. Don't feel guilt about it. That's the biggest thing. Do not feel guilt over something like that because that can spiral you into this days and days of eating like crap and kind of really going off, off um, your plan. Um, let's see. So the next thing, and we kind of already talked about that. this, is... Um, Developing a healthy relationship with your food. So years ago, I felt like, and I've told Chris this before, I felt like I thought about food all the time. 80% of the day I was thinking about food. Um, and this is not uncommon. In fact, Sonia told me today that she, she was thinking about food. She thinks about food all the time. In the last three weeks, she's gotten to a point where she no longer thinks about food unless she's going to eat food. So it's not something that's on our mind all, all the time. That is huge, guys. That's, And I don't know if men are like this, but for women, I feel like we, we do. We obsess about it. We obsess about what, what we're we going to eat. Um, so not 
not looking at food as good or bad and just looking at it as fuel is going to help you to um, have a better and healthier relationship with food. Um, the, the other thing I want to talk about is that there is a an emotional attachment to food. That is a real thing. And sometimes you're not aware of that emotional attachment until you start tracking macros or start tracking or following some kind of food guideline. I didn't know I had an emotional attachment to food until I started tracking macros. When my, my our twins were little and I would stress out, I didn't know I did this, but I would go to the gas station, I would get a Diet Coke and a bag of M&Ms. When I started tracking macros, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I do this a lot. I want to do that a lot. And it just brought bringing awareness. That's the first step is just being aware that you do have an emotional attachment to food and then finding something else to replace it with, something that's going to move you in the right direction. So it's okay. Emotional attachment to food is normal, but learning how to cope with that and learning to find other ways to deal with your emotions rather than food is going to put you in the right direction. So for me, um, I, it was a stress relief, so I had to find another way to relieve stress. Um, it could be as easy as going in my room and shutting the door and just having like a minute to myself. <laughs> um, and I'm not going to say Our that I'm perfect. Know when it's time for Tersa's timeout. Of course, mommy timeouts. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm all about that. And I'm not going to say I'm perfect and that I never emotionally eat. I definitely emotionally eat a lot less than I used to, um, but I'm at least aware of it and I and I can make a conscious choice about that. And the last thing I want to say is just, guys, enjoy your journey. There, This is not a quick fix. It's going to take more time. Be happy with where you're at and don't wait to be happy when you arrive at your goal. Because once you hit that goal, most likely you're going to have another goal. I was just telling Sonia this morning that for some reason in my head, I'm going to give you guys a little insight. I think I should weigh less than 150 pounds. So in my head, I'm thinking less than 150. That's what I weighed before I started crossfitting. Again, that was six years ago. So my head thinks I'll be happy when I weigh less than 150. Well, I just pulled out my scan. I left it on the table over there or I would show you. I just pulled out my in-body scans and I have um, a year and a half of scans along the bottom. Guess how many times that weight dropped below 150? zero times zero times my weight dropped below 150 and yet in my head i think i'm not happy until i'm under 150 why why do i have that unrealistic goal i have i have times during that time that my body fat is down to 15 percent, but yet i still feel like i should weigh less than 150. so getting having realistic expectations of yourself and getting away from that number on the scale is huge because I've, I'm healthy I and I should be happy with where I'm at. So if you're waiting to be happy until you arrive, you're never really going to be happy. Just enjoy where you're at. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the steps that you're making and the progress you're making so that you can find happiness in any part of your life. You know, you can be 20 pounds be over what you want your goal weight is and still find happiness if you enjoy the, the process. So... Remember, this is a long, we're, we're looking for long lasting success. It's not going to happen overnight and it's just going to take time and consistency, but it works. You guys, it works. So thanks for letting me talk to you guys today. I don't know if there's anything else you want to say, but hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions or want to learn more about what I teach, I'm happy to talk to you. You can always message me, um, reach out on our Facebook page, or if you have my number, give me a call. Happy to help. Awesome. Thanks for sharing all that. We do need to get Sonia on here, though. Yeah, she's awesome. She's awesome. (laughs) She'd be be great. I tried to get her to go last second, but that that wasn't happening today. (laughs) Tersa doesn't like that either. No. (laughs) we got to plan this out. Yes. So um, thanks for being on here today. Of course. Thanks for sharing that. Food is not the enemy. It is fuel. It helps us. makes us stronger. So enjoy your week. When you... Please subscribe to our podcast on any of your favorite pod- podcast platforms. Uh, please do a review. We want to keep get, making this better each week. And uh, we sure love and appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening. And we will see you later. Thanks Bye. a lot.